Hi friends, I am Dr. Swapna Chekuri from Hyderabad Women and Fertility Centre. Welcome to my channel. So today let us discuss about the myths regarding diet in pregnancy. The most of the individuals as soon as a pregnancy is confirmed they will have a doubts. What to eat, what not to eat, should I take absolute bed rest. So all these are the commonly asked queries during the initial weeks of pregnancy. So basically they will have nausea and vomiting in the initial weeks. So that's when they may not be able to prepare food themselves at home. So they try to you know, prefer outside food but as much as possible try to avoid outside food. Because in a bakery items they use lot of maida, saturated fats, dalda and then you know high content of salt and sugars. So all these are not good for the health of both mother and the baby as well. So better to avoid bakery items and avoid aerated drinks and if, because uh, which will affect the growth of the baby's uh, bone growth as well. And the third most important is like you know you need to take more of vitamin C fruits like you know orange juice and then lemon juice. All these we usually advise to increase the immunity of the lady of the pregnant woman. But at the same time some individuals they feel you know will have cold and cough if you take vitamin C fruits. So nothing of that sort it's purely a myth. And then uh, uh, consuming coconut water. So coconut water also some individuals they feel that if they drink coconut water the baby's head size might increase and the chance of normal delivery won't be there. But nothing of that sort it's purely a myth. Basically coconut water you can consume at least two to three times per week. It is not mandatory that daily you need to take the coconut water. And uh, preferably you take it in the mornings or afternoons. Of course evening also you can take but uh, with the coconut water no, you might have frequent urination so you might have night uh, disturbed sleep so it's better you consume either in the mornings or in the afternoon sir and then regarding non-veg most of the individuals when we ask them to take non-veg they'll say at home they are not giving non-veg because that might lead to you know miscarriages or you know some it can cause some harm to the baby so nothing of that sort it's purely a myth basically non-veg it should be like properly cooked non-veg and uh, it should be like you know uh, in a curry form and uh, just avoid the deep oily uh, fried items and then uh, excessive spicy items those things you need to avoid but uh, try to take non-veg from initial weeks of pregnancy as well and take one boiled egg instead of omelette uh, this boiled egg is preferable because the protein content is kept intact uh, when you boil the egg and the other important points regarding the diet is like you know regarding fruits in fruits also fresh fruits like seasonal fruits like mango papaya and pineapple properly you know uh, the ripened ones you can take uh, you need to avoid raw papaya or raw pineapple because that contains a pepin which is not uh, good for the health of the baby and the uh, most important is like you know uh, fruit juices uh, fruit juices also it's preferable you prepare at home and then take it uh, avoid uh, outside like a uh, tinned or canned uh, fruit juices because that contains preservatives uh, and even uh, regarding uh, Chinese food most of them they'll ask can we have Chinese food because see homemade Chinese food you can consume but uh, outside uh, Chinese food you better avoid because uh, for the taste purpose now they'll add a ginomoto and they'll add some preservatives which are uh, harmful for the growth of the baby and it will affect the health of the mother as well and that can lead to diarrhea and all those things so better avoid outside food and during pregnancy try to avoid the uh, intake of tea and coffee because uh, tea contains tannins which inhibits the absorption of the food materials what we take so that can lead to anemia indirectly and even uh, better to avoid coffee because it contains caffeine which is not good for the baby health so better to avoid these two drinks and uh, if you are really want to have tea or coffee you can have a very small cup of uh, no, tea or coffee and you should not consume too much and uh, regarding milk uh, milk also so many individuals they say we have nausea vomiting sensation when we see the milk of course if you are not able to drink milk at least take curds buttermilk or paneer or cheese items which are all derivatives of uh, you know these are all uh, milk products uh, because they are all rich sources of calcium and uh, some individuals when we ask them to say you need to take uh, and mean when we ask them to consume more of curds and buttermilk they say like you know we might have cold or cough that's also a purely myth uh, because consumption of uh, curd and buttermilk that contains more of lactobacillus uh, which acts as a probiotic and it is very much beneficial for the health of both mother and the baby as well and uh, regarding dry fruits dry fruits also when we ask them to consume they say that might cause heat and that might lead to miscarriages so nothing of that sort dry fruits also in adequate amounts you can take right from the beginning of pregnancy till delivery so no issues at all and uh, regarding ghee so so many individuals they think that a consumption of ghee in excess amounts will lead to a normal delivery nothing of that sort so ghee is actually it's good for uh, pregnant ladies but in a limited amounts like you know daily one to two spoons is adequate enough because uh, ghee contains a uh, high 
uh, high amount of proteins it contains good fats and as well as it relieves constipation so it helps for the digestion of the food so in that way ghee is useful and regarding kesar kesar also like uh, so many individuals they think that a kesar consumption can uh, increase the color of the baby's uh, skin as well so nothing of that sort it's purely a myth consumption of kesar it keeps our uh, you know body warmth and uh, it supplies some minerals to the body and uh, nothing related to the baby's skin because it's purely dependent on the genetics and avoid uh, fishes also they are very good for pregnant ladies because that contains omega-3 fatty acids which is very much essential for the baby's brain growth but then avoid uh, fishes which are uh, uh, you know rich in uh, mercury levels like you know mackerel fish uh, salmon or shellfish these things you need to avoid so friends, uh, if you like this video, if you find it informative, please like my video and uh, share with your friends and needy people. Thank you.